Hi everybody, this is Miss O and I'm your teacher and today um, we're going to read this uh, paper. It's called Kids Who Fought for Change. So I'd like you to read along with me and when I stop you put in the periods. Okay, I want you to uh, circle all the periods that you see. All right, Kids Who Fought for Change. 60 years ago, a group of kids helped end segregation in Oklahoma City. And there's a period, so circle that period. We're looking at the periods at the ends of the sentences today. All right, here we go. February 20th, 2017. It was a hot August day in 1958. Seven-year-old Ayana Najuma and her friends walked into the Katz Drug Store in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. They sat down at the lunch counter. They tried to order food, but the waitresses ignored them. The kids sat there for hours. No one would wait on Ayana and her friends for one reason. They were African American. This was one of many restaurants in the South that refused to serve black people at the time. Ayana and the 12 other kids knew they wouldn't be served, but they actually weren't there to eat. They were there to stand up against injustice. They were working to end segregation. That's the practice of keeping black people separate from white people. With some help from adults, the kids held a protest called a sit-in. We said to each other, we want to change. Why wait? Let's do it now, Ayana recalls. Troubled times. Growing up, Ayana was used to the unjust treatment of black people. Racism has a long history in the U.S., beginning with slavery. Slavery was banned in the U.S. in 1865, but other forms of racism continued. African Americans were still treated cruelly. One example of this mistreatment was segregation. Such forms of mistreatment were common and legal in many states. That was especially true in the South. For kids like Ayana, life with segregation was all they knew. But in 1958, Ayana and her friends took a bus trip to New York City. Ayana noticed that life was different for black people in the North. There were no signs that designated water fountains for whites only. Black people and white people ate at the same restaurants. They also lived in the same neighborhoods. Turn your paper over. The kids wanted Oklahoma City to be more like New York City, so they decided to do something about it. Many Americans took similar actions against racism in the 1950s and 1960s. These protests were a big part of what became known as the Civil Rights Movement. Kid power, yeah. On the first day of the sit-in, Ayana and the other kids sat at the lunch counter. They stayed until the restaurant closed for the night. No one ever took their order. So the kids went back the next day. That's when the situation grew tense. Some white customers yelled at the kids. Others threw ketchup on them. Through it all, the kids remained peaceful and polite. During the third day of their sit-in, the kids got good news. The owners of the store agreed to start serving black customers at the lunch counter. It was a big deal, Ayana remembers. It was a slam dunk to be able to sit there and have a hamburger and Coke. Ayana and her friends weren't done, though. For six years, they took part in sit-ins at other restaurants in Oklahoma. One by one, many of the restaurants became integrated. Their last sit-in took place in 1964. That same year, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. The law made segregation illegal throughout the U.S. Ayana and the other kids were proud to do their part to bring about change in their hometown and their nation. Even though I was little, my voice was just as important as everyone else's voice, Ayana says. Okay, here's the questions. Close reading questions. Why did Ayana Najuma and her friends go into Kat's drug store? Number two, which details from the article support the idea that life in the 1950s was different for black people in the North than it was for the South, in the South? How did the first day of the sit-in differ from the second day? Number four, what does Ayana mean when she says it was a slam dunk to be able to sit there and have a hamburger and Coke? Five, 
Based on her quotes in the article, what can you infer about how Ayana feels about kid power? Okay, get to work, kids.